Big Gang Scott here. In this video, we'll look at the skin retouching filter in On One Effects. And your first thought about this filter might be, you know, why do I need this? Because I have the portrait module. Well, your thinking is spot on. The skin retouching filter is a vestigial filter. It's an older filter. Uh, it's so old, so much so, I do not want you to use it on people. I'm going to put a marker in the video. It's going to stay on the screen. So anyone else watching this that doesn't, uh, you know, watch this intro knows that this is really not the strong filter to use for retouching skin. It's it's just, it's, it's old, you know, uh, but I'll cover all the sliders in it, why we still have the filter, and I'll show you one use case that has nothing to do with skin retouching where it does have some interesting properties. So there might still be a way you might want to use it or tinker around with it. And really quick, if you are interested in adding on one products to your workflow, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there. It'll save you some money, give me a little bit of support. I can keep doing videos like this. So uh, let's just start in with the skin retouching filter here. So what I want to do here uh, is get this filter added, but uh, let's go through what skin retouching does. I'll show you its results and then explain you know, why this isn't the best way to do retouching on a person. You have portrait, portrait just works better. It's a cleaner result, it's faster, all of the above. But we'll go through, we'll go through the sliders here, right? So um, skin retouching, like all of our sliders, we've got our masking, we've got our opacity, we have a handful of styles and we have uh, five controls. And the first one is actually down at the bottom, one of the more important ones is skin color. You choose what the skin color is for your subject. And if I click here and she's got a little bit more of a reddish tone to her skin, we'll choose that. And then the range slider says how much or how little of that color to adjust. And as I click and drag, you notice you get this interesting overlay. It almost uh, has like, <laughs> honestly, like a, an afterworld, like, you know, a uh, day of the dead, you know, walking dead kind of feel to it because it gives you this overlay and the darker areas mean less of the retouching is applied, the lighter areas mean more. And so we want this mainly on her skin, right? Something like that. Now I can always use the masking tools to clean it up, but we'll start with range. What do the four sliders do? Blemishes. It does what you think it would do. It kind of removes blemishes, tries to at least. As we push this slider and uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in. We'll put her skin next to the slider so we can see what's going on. Blemishes get a little bit smoother. It's kind of noticeable, not so much. Notice around the eyes, that's really not blemishes per se. It's kind of just smoothing that area out. So there are some artifacts. There's just some interesting detections that this, this uh, filter is doing. Smoothing. Smoothing does what you think it would do. It smooths out the skin. We can push this all the way and we can see you get that very you know plastic look. Nothing at all. You know, so some level of smoothing things out. Shine will reduce shine areas. So like the bridge of her nose, you'll notice I push this higher. We see less shine there, but there's some weird gradation happening, right? With the coloring, the coloring's a little bit off. Uh, the That's kind of the goal of what the next slider is, evenness. This tries to smooth out the coloration of the skin overall. The thing about it is, notice you get these shifts, right? This is kind of more toward, well, nothing done to it. You have a greener tone. There's a lot of green in the background, but now her skin becomes, you know, this orangey color. And it's, it does, it does a job that it's, you know, it's trying to do something. It does what it does. It's the results are uh, problematic really, but you know, before, and after. But notice, you know, a lot of things happen. Okay, the shine went away, but there's a coloration shift and uh, we lose some of the texture of the skin without getting, you know, uh, the, the smoothness can just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's off a little bit. Um, and so, you know, that's what this, that's what this tool does. One more time with the before and after. But, uh, you know, why is this thing still around in the product? And it's because of presets. If you had done any presets that used this filter, you want those presets to keep working. It's also because of any previous editing you've done. If you've been using Photo Raw for several years, you've done retouching non-destructively using skin retouching, you want that to keep working. And so the filter stays in the product. It doesn't go away. But uh, you know, let's, um, let's now show like the, the, the better way to do this with, with people. Turn this thing off. 
we go over to Portrait. I'm just going to let Portrait do its work. It detects the face, it does the adjustment, and it's basically finished. Right? And now before and after, the eyes are popping better, the skin just looks more natural, there isn't a color shift, and you notice there is a mask that was created, so this automatically targeted those changes to just this, uh, this model's face. So if you're working on portraits, you're doing retouching on photos with people, use portrait. That's what it's there for. You're doing new work. Don't use skin retouching on people. That is you know, the, the key message of this video. As much as I'm explaining the tool and all the sliders, don't use it on people. Use portrait instead. Now, what is skin smoothing really doing? Well, it, you know, it's, it's uh, or sorry, skin retouching. It, it's trying to smooth things out, get some evenness and color. It's like, well, okay, where might we use that kind of thinking in other photos? And I'm going to show you a landscape example of where, well, there's an interesting result from skin retouching, and there's no skin in the photo at all. So, uh, so let's have a look at this. I have this beach scene where it was a very windy day and the, a lot of this loose sand is getting blown around. So there's all this soft sand kind of just moving around. Well, what about using the skin retouching as a way to smooth that out and get a little more evenness in the coloration? And of course, the trigger for the thought was, well, this sand is you know, kind of like a skin tone. But in practice, you can't select any color to do smoothing. So I mean, this could work for you know smoothing out a blue sky or things like that. But let me add the skin retouching to the photo here. And notice the skin color that's selected. There's kind of like a little bit of an automatic, let me look at the photo and see what we get here. But we'll choose a skin tone. You know, we're saying a skin tone. We'll choose a color that we want to get some of this smoothing with. All right, so now that I have that, I can increase the range. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for making sure that my sand gets the uh, the application and you know not so much the, the the rocks and things like that so things that are darker uh, is is good that means I'm not going to have the smoothing happening there okay now let's just push uh, let me put evenness all the way down and just push smoothing back and forth right you're going to see that sand change now there is some smoothing happening in like this foreground rock face uh, because there's a similar tone, a similar color tone to the range we have selected. Then I'll push the smoothing watching the sand to where I like it. And then I have my masking tools, right? So I've got my masking tools. We can do a, a quick paint out with, actually let's just use a, a gradient like that. I don't need it anywhere on the top. Can fade that out to there, right? And then I can continue using my brush, and you'll get the idea here really quickly. I can start to brush away that smoothing from this rock, and I'll do this quickly so that you get the, the concept. You don't have to watch me try to get the mask edges done. Okay, there's that rock, and the same thing for this fallen tree, right? Just going through here, removing any of that smoothing so that I still have the texture of the, 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 the bark and what's left of, of this tree trunk. And you know, I can keep working my way through there. But what the skin smoothing or skin retouching is doing now with that smoothing slider is it's adding softness to what was already uh, a scene that had a, a fair amount of motion in it. And uh, it's letting me target that to just those, those sandy areas accentuates my crisper subjects. So sometimes there can be a place for it. If you find you have a photo where you want a particular color range to be a little soft, and it's different than a blur, so uh, it does have a different treatment, and we can play around further with you know, changing the coloration too, right? We've got this evenness slider where we can smooth out the different color tonations between these, and it get an even smoother looking sand result. So um, that's kind of the skin retouching filter. Once again, don't use it on people. Okay? <laughs> do yourself a favor. Do the people in your photos a favor and use the portrait module to do any type of blemish or skin retouching and smoothing. But, uh, think about skin retouching more so as like 
color smoothing maybe uh, you know color range and getting a certain softness and a little more of a of a blended color uh, you, you might find a use for it in other types of photos but that's the filter hope you enjoyed the video any other questions go ahead and drop them below and until next time my name is Scott Davenport have fun